there's a tantalizing story out there regarding a molecule called nicotine adenine dinucleotide and reversing aging. You see, it's been done in mice. Bear with me. I'll get back to anti-aging, but I want to introduce you to a few very long-lived animals, just in case you doubt cells can live that long. First, let's have gander with the rockfish. The rockfish lives to an average age of 205 years. Not very pretty, but that lifespan is impressive. Even more impressive is the lifespan of the Greenland shark. The Greenland shark lives to be over 400 years old. Now, if you're about to scratch your head and say, well, maybe DNA can be protected and replicate over a few hundred years, but there's got to be a limit. Well, take a look at this one, the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine. It lives to the age of 4,713 years. That's right, over 4,000 years old. Don't call me mad, but there's evidence that lobsters may not age. Older lobsters are more fertile than young lobsters, and they express a telomerase throughout their lifespan that most animals only express during embryogenesis. So, I'm excited about anti-aging and reversing aging. So let's go back to NAD, because that's what the, where the story starts. What is nicotine adenine dinucleotide? NAD for short. Take your hand off the clicker, I see you. I'm going to be short. It basically carries hydrogen atoms with their electrons and exists in two forms, NAD and NADH. It's involved in redox reactions, that is, reactions where hydrogen is given up by one compound and received by another. Now, you've all heard of ATP, the energy currency of the cell. Or we use it when our heart beats, when we move a muscle, and many, many more things. And we use the energy in ATP by harvesting the energy between the bonds. So we take ATP and we convert it to ADP, adenine diphosphate. Enter NAD. We need to get, we eat our food, whatever, we need to regenerate that ATP so we can move our muscles, have our heartbeat, and so forth. Even if we have the precursors to do it, we can't do it without NADH because we need those electrons and that hydrogen to make the bond that makes the ADP puts the phosphate to make ATP on the ATP. So here is the interesting thing, and you're going to be glad you stuck with me. As we age, the levels of NAD in our bodies decrease. So a Harvard scientist named David Sinclair did some tests in mice. He gave them a water-soluble precursor, NMN, in their drinking water, and then did a few tests down the line. He found out that the mice actually got younger. He tested the muscle tissue. He ran them on treadmills. He found that running them on treadmills against mice the same age without NMN, they outran them. Uh, he found certain genes called the sirtuins were turned on. Um, he found the NAD bound to, well, they know the NAD binds to a protein that binds to the NAD repair, or the DNA repair enzyme gene and takes it off so the DNA repair enzyme can be expressed. So the problems of aging, such as low energy, DNA replication errors leading to diseases such as cancer might be inhibited by providing this precursor. So what about humans? Well, there's an ongoing human trial right now, and you can get NMN or its cousin nicotinamide ribosyl online. But the glitch is, if you look at the amounts that were given in the mice and convert them to the human dose, it comes out to something like 40 grams per day per human. Okay, so remember, most of your capsules are like 500 milligrams, which is a half a gram. There are two problems with this. One, that amount is prohibitively expensive. And secondly, even if we tried to take in 40 grams of it, we don't know if humans would react the same as mice. Net Niagen, the company that makes nicotinamide ribosyl, did a clinical trial where they demonstrated that, yes, the NR did raise the NAD levels in humans, but the amount we could absorb didn't get higher when they gave it a dose of 1,000 mil, uh, milligrams, which is one gram. So they recommend lower doses. So, of course, be sane, wait for the clinical trials, and so forth. Why? There are different sirtuin genes, and if you look at just one sirtuin gene, there are variants within it. So if you look at the sirt1 gene, 11% uh, of people have a minor allele C, which is associated with a 30% less risk of dying. And they did a study with an 18-year 18 18-year follow-up, and they found that to be so. The rest of us have TT, which is associated with a high risk of diabetes, increases diabetes risk almost nine times. So if you turn on the gene, you don't know when you have it's a little bit of a risk. It's a very complicated story. We're just learning all the major and minor details. 
Now, increasing the sirtuin genes may decrease inflammation, which you usually we think is a good thing, like you have arthritis or some of these other problems, but inflammation also plays a role in fighting disease and removing damage to dead tissue from the body. So we don't want to just turn it off. So, come on biohacking groups, you know what I went and did. I went out and bought some NMN, some nicotinamide ribosal. So I took the NMN for a few weeks and then I took the NR for a few weeks, about 700 milligrams a day. Um, but I really didn't notice much of a difference. Without a DNA test, I'm sorry, yeah, you know, without a DNA test or without biochemical tests, you can't tell whether you've turned on biochemical uh, DNA repair enzymes. Now, I had previously had some um, blood tests done this year and from a physical, and then I had my inside tracker results, and my glucose levels were a little bit better, but it didn't really help anything else. Um, you know, the energy levels were a little higher, but not much more than when I take some B vitamins. So I think the problem right now is how well we absorb this supplement and whether it even works in humans. We need to know four things at the moment. First, does it work in humans? Secondly, is it safe and it doesn't have negative side effects like tumor promotion? What dose do humans need? A good delivery method that is well absorbed in humans, and I aired, we need five things. Cost needs to come down, because if you need to take 40, mil, 40 grams a day, right now it's way too expensive, it's not reachable. So, for those of you that are thinkers and wondering why not give NAD directly, the molecule isn't directly taken from our gastrointestinal system into the inside of the cells where we need it, but precursors seem to be. And all the studies that I found using NAD and IV drips, such as mice, um, have shown, for instance, in mice it can drastically lower blood sugar levels, which uh, shows that it's not, you know, something to play with. There are clinics using IV NAD therapy for drug and opate withdrawal, but my current research indicates it's not an FDA-approved therapy at this time, which means it really hasn't been scientifically proven. Um, since NAD is reused in a pool for a period of time, but it doesn't appear to be stored well, I kind of suspect the optimum dose is going to be circadian, time with the functions we wish to enhance, such as tissue building and repair at night. And perhaps the dose will be once or twice weekly to refresh pools rather than daily. But I speculate. But I see light in the horizon. A new day is coming where we're going to treat aging and the problems that come with it as a disease. And we'll probably be able to live decades, if not longer, than we do now. I say in five years, the scientists will know that how it can be done, and in 10 years, it'll be implemented across a larger population. Now, all those extra people, that's a topic for another day.